there are some situations where you might be asked to manipulate a chemical equation and manipulate the equilibrium constant for the equation uh, for the equation accordingly. So there are really three possibilities, three possible manipulations of a chemical equation that you can perform, and you would have to carry that over through with the with the equilibrium constant. One of them is uh, reversing an equation, so the products become reactants, the reactants become products. One of them is multiplying the equation by a factor, so you would multiply all the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation by a factor. What does that do to the equilibrium constant? And then finally, uh, another scenario, another manipulation of a chemical equation that you might have to perform would be adding uh, more than one equation, two or more equations together uh, to form an overall equation, an overall reaction. So how would we arrive at a, a rate constant for that overall reaction, uh, knowing the rate constants for all those reactions that we added together? So we're going to go through each one of these scenarios, and I'm going to um, sort of explain how the mathematics works uh, along the way. One manipulation, uh, the first one that we looked at in that little bulleted list was if you reverse a chemical equation. So if you reverse a chemical equation, what does that do to the equilibrium constant? Well, it inverts it, right? If you reverse the chemical equation, you invert the equilibrium constant, right? So to demonstrate this, uh, I'm going to go to the whiteboard. Let's say we have a chemical equation that looks like this, where we have A plus 2B reacting at equilibrium to form 3C, right? So this is just a general equation, right? Now, we know from the law of mass action that this reaction, or the, excuse me, that the equilibrium constant associated with this reaction is going to be the concentration of C to the third power cubed times the concentration of A, or excuse me, divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. So we know that this is the expression for the equilibrium constant for a reaction that looks like this, right? Now, if we had the reverse reaction, so I'll do that in blue. So let's say we have the reverse reaction, products become reactants, reactants become products. We would have 3C reacting to form A plus 2B, right? And so this reaction, I'll call it K minus 1, the reverse rate constant. For, or not rate constant, see here, I, I, I just got it mixed up too. The reverse equilibrium constant uh, would be concentration of A times concentration of B squared divided by the concentration of C cubed, right? And so we can see here that the expressions for the equilibrium constant between the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are flipped. All we've done is we've just taken the reciprocal, the inversion of one rate con or one equilibrium constant to arrive at the other. And so we have this relationship here where the K minus one is simply equal to one over K, right? So if you have an equilibrium constant and you want to know the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction, all you got to do is take one and divide it by that original equilibrium constant and voila, there you are. There's the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction. So I hope everybody's following because we are going to move on with the second scenario. So the second scenario is that if you multiply an equation by a factor, so in other words, if I take all the coefficients of a balanced chemical equation at equilibrium and I multiply that by some factor, what you're going to do is you're going to raise the equilibrium constant to the power of that same factor. So just like in the previous example, I'm going to show you again how the mathematics works behind this. If we go back to that same scenario, I wish I didn't erase it a moment ago because I'm using it again. So if we go back to that same scenario, right, where we have, uh, let's see, A uh, plus 2B reacting to form C, right? And of course, the equilibrium constant for this is K is equal to concentration of, wait, I said 3C, that's what it should be. 3C, right? Concentration of C cubed divided by concentration of A times concentration of B squared, right? So that's the equilibrium constant for the original reaction, right? Now, imagine that I multiply this equation by some factor 
which we will call n, right? So the resulting equation would be n times a plus 2n times b reacts to form 3n times c. So again, if you multiply an equation by a factor, you're multiplying all of the coefficients in that equation by the same factor, right? So how does that affect the equilibrium constant? Well, again, if we apply the law of mass action once again, we get that k, I'll just call it uh, k prime. k prime is equal to concentration of c to the 3n, right, raised to its coefficient, divided by the concentration of A to the N times the concentration of B to the 2N, right? This expression here simplifies down just because of the properties of, of exponents to the concentration of C cubed divided by concentration of A times concentration of B squared, uh, this whole thing to the power of N, right? And so we arrive at the, the relationship that we talked about before where we have K prime is equal to the original equilibrium constant K to the power of N. Whichever factor it was that you multiplied by the original equation, you take the equilibrium constant, you raise it to that factor, and that gives you the equilibrium constant associated with your uh, new equation. All right, so the third possibility, the third type of manipulation that you might be asked to perform on a chemical equation and understand what to do with its equilibrium constant is has to do with adding equations together. So if you add equations together to obtain an overall balanced chemical equation, what do you do? Well, you're going to multiply. You're going to multiply the equilibrium constants for those individual summed reactions to arrive at the equilibrium constant for your summation, for your overall reaction. And so I can once again go to the whiteboard and explain uh, how this works uh, from a mathematical point of view. So let's say that you have two reactions that you're adding together. The first reaction. Let's say that it is uh, A reacting to form 2B. And then let's say that you have 2B reacting to form 3C, right? So those are your two equations that you add together. And then your, your 2Bs would cancel once you add those together. And the overall equation that you would get would be A is reacting to form 3C, right? So what would the equilibrium constants look like for these reactions? Well, this one, I'll call it K1, is equal to, what is it gonna be? What do you think it's gonna be? <laughs> it's gonna be concentration of B squared over concentration of A. And then this one down here, K2, I'll call it K2. Uh, not to be confused with something that you should never ingest. <laughs> the second equilibrium constant is going to be concentration of C cubed divided by concentration of B squared, right? And this one down here, which I'll call KO, just for overall, is going to be concentration of C cubed divided by concentration of a, right? So notice that if we take K1 and multiply it by K2, and I'm going to try to do this little fancy uh, lasso thing here. I'm going to lasso this K2 expression right here, and I'm going to bring it over there. So imagine I'm multiplying these together, right? Then you see my concentration of B squared terms are going to cancel, and I'll be left with concentration of C cubed over concentration of A. So it makes sense, right? There's a reason why multiplying the equilibrium constants for the individual reactions 
arrives at the equilibrium constant for the overall. So I could have just told you guys that that's how it works, right? I could have just told you the rules, but I always like to make sure I'm explaining things and, and make sure people kind of get an understanding mathematically of, of how this works. Um, I don't like to just spoon feed you uh, a formula and expect you to follow it. I really, really want you to understand uh, the mathematics behind it. So I really hope you have, um, you've appreciated that and, and you've found value in it. So let's do a problem where we put that knowledge to work. So it says to consider the following reaction where we have two COF2 reacting to form CO2 and CF4. And that has an equilibrium constant of 2.2 times 10 to the sixth at 25 degrees Celsius. Now the at 25 degrees Celsius part might seem insignificant, but it's not. Equilibrium constants do depend on temperature and we will certainly talk about that in a later live stream, but just uh, understand for now that equilibrium constants do change uh, with, ch with temperature. Um, so the problem asks us <clears throat> to calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction below at the same temperature where we have two CO2 plus two CF4 reacting to form four COF2. So the main idea here is that this equation for which we're trying to find the equilibrium constant is the result of one or more manipulations to this equation up here in which the equilibrium constant is already given. So we need to come up with a plan for how we're going to manipulate this equation to uh, to get from the reaction that we started with to the reaction that we end up with. And we need to make sure that we understand those relationships involving the equilibrium constant along the way. I don't know about you, but this kind of reminds me of like those those uh, delta H Hess's law problems where you manipulate delta H based on manipulating chemical equations. That's the impression that I got when I first started studying this. Uh, type a message in the chat if you feel the same way or not, whatever you want. <laughs> All right. So we can see, we can clearly see, right, that we're going to have to reverse this chemical equation, right? Because in the example that we're given, we have COF2 on the left. And in the example, in, in the target equation, I'll just call this the target equation from here on out, we have the COF2 on the right. So we definitely have to reverse this equation. Um, not That's not all that we have to do, but that's at least one thing that we have to do. So why don't we start with that, right? So if we take this equation up here, right, and we reverse it, well, what are we gonna end up with? Well, that equation is going to be uh, CO2 plus CF4 yields two COF2. If we recall from those rules that we discussed earlier, when we reverse a chemical equation, we invert the equilibrium constant. We take one over the equilibrium constant, right? And so for this reaction, K is going to be one over this original equilibrium constant, 2.2 times 10 to the sixth, right? One over 2.2 times 10 to the sixth. So I got 4.5 times 10 to the minus seven, right? So this is our equilibrium constant upon reversing the equation that we started with. Now, we still have to do more work, right? Because this equation is not identical to the target equation. To get our target equation, we have to multiply this equation by a factor. We have to multiply this by a factor of, looks like, looks like it's gonna be two, right? So we need to take this equation and we need to multiply that by a factor of two, right? And so in doing that, what we're gonna end up with is an equation that looks like this. It's gonna be our target equation, right? Two CO2 plus, or excuse me, yeah, two CO2 plus two CF4 yields four COF2. So that's our target equation. That's what we want. And remember from the rules that we talked about earlier, when we multiply an equation by a factor, we're going to raise the equilibrium constant to the power of that factor. So this 
equilibrium constant that we just calculated here, what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to square it. We're going to raise that to the second power. And the number that you end up with, and again, I would highly encourage anybody who has a calculator who might be watching to perform this calculation for yourself just to make sure uh, that I haven't done it incorrectly myself. The number that I ended up with is 2.0 times 10 to the minus 13. So that is what I ended up with, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 13. So that is kind of a typical problem that you might encounter uh, involving manipulating chemical equations and manipulating the equilibrium constants accordingly. All right, so I hope that's been helpful. Let me know. Either way, if it's been helpful, let me know. If it hasn't been helpful, let me know. Any kind of feedback is good. Any kind of feedback is important. It is absolutely necessary that I understand uh, where we're all at and what I'm doing well and what I'm doing poorly. All right. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to watch the full video from which this clip was taken, click the box over there on the left. And if you'd like to watch my entire chemical equilibrium playlist, click the box on the right. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.